We are very lucky today in that we have a diverse panel with three very lovely ladies who are not only good looking, but very smart, okay? <laughs> Being smart is just as important, uh, maybe more important. Uh, we want to continue the theme that uh, Professor XYZ <laughs> started. Uh, I can't pronounce your name either, shall we? <laughs> Even though no, we knew each other for a long time. Uh, so without further ado, I'd like to hand over the mic to each of these ladies and have them introduce themselves and what they do in about one and a half to two minutes. Okay, sounds good. I stand up and introduce myself. I'm Kathy Pan, obviously a Chinese American. So I became a US citizen back in 1998. It's so wonderful to see some young people here. I start by telling a story actually happened today, 20 years ago. So at the time I was the president for Asian Business Council. So there was a young lady, she was 28. She walked into my office crying. She went to MIT. She's an outstanding student. She had an MBA from Harvard. So she was in the engineering lab. So she wanted to take a business position. But when she was doing interviewing, the answers she got was very consistent. Say, we don't have any positions for China market because she looks like Chinese. She said, I don't speak Chinese. I'm not Chinese. So you think about it today, nothing will be happening like that. So I'm just telling your young people, you are very, very lucky to be born here and to be part of true America. But that takes many of us, many Asians, not a few from corporate America, I have been in corporate America for many years. So it takes a lot of us to fight for our rights, to really, really to be part of the majority. So, um, not three really short. Um, so I have been moving places. I lived in Chicago, I went to Uni University of Chicago before, and then New York, and then also uh, at a startup company in San Diego. And now I'm doing the global talent recruiting and also doing the mentoring coaching, really helping Asian Americans to advance in corporate and also in, in, in the majority of society. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gents. I'm Angelica Cortez, and I am the founder of Lead Filipino, and I'm sure you can guess what we're about. We work on leadership issues with Filipinos and Filipinas. Are there any in the audience today? Is it only me? That's okay. <laughs> uh, Bay Area born and raised, second generation. I grew up in the East Bay in Pittsburgh with no H. Uh, right near Antioch. I attended San Jose State University and studied political science, the only true science, I'm told, um, and got uh, my Master of Public Administration from the University of San Francisco, and I'm currently halfway through my Doctor of Education program at the University of Southern California. I have built my career working in and for nonprofit advocacy organizations all around health and human services. I worked uh, for a former state assembly member. And my day job right now, aside from Lead Filipino, is working for the Silicon Valley Leadership Group on their investor relations and statewide coalitions team. Thank you for allowing me the honor to join you this evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Ni hao and namaste. I guess we don't have a Filipino community member here, so I'm just taking liberty of saying it Chinese and Indian. So I'm Soma Chatterjee. I am the diversity ambassador for India Currents. And I guess uh, the very reason that such a designation even exists in our media publication that speaks volumes of our commitment and intent to connect with the greater community here and learn from each other. I also represent uh, the board of Silicon Valley Interreligious Council, representing Hinduism from Hindu American Foundation. 
So in my tenure as a media professional and an interfaith and community leader, I have worked um, extensively with various uh, communities here in grassroots capacity in terms of uh, civic services and uh, elected officials. So um, I'm really excited um, to be part of the Civic Forum and thank you Ding Ding TV for, for getting us all together and thank you all of you for being here. Thank you. So uh, my name is Joe Wong. Actually, I have three jobs. I am the APAPA Public Policy and Issues Committee Chair, and I'm the 8020 National Political Action Committee good nationwide. Our board members have Indian American, Chinese American, Japanese American, Korean American, Filipino, I don't know who, what else there is. But we're a very diverse group, and our, our the job there is to get Asians to vote in unison with each other, because if we don't do that, we cancel each other out. And then I just got another job with CLUSA as the editor. So my theme being the editor of CLUSA is to unite all Asian Americans. Okay, so much for me. So I want to hand the mic to these ladies again and ask them because we represent a diverse Asian group, to talk about Asian American from their own perspective first, because we need to understand where you're coming from, and then eventually we have a kumbaya moment, we all unite together and go out and cake ass. <laughs> Thank you. Um, uh, as I mentioned, I'm Chinese American and also very active the UCA. How many of you have heard of UCA? Very few. So it's the United Chinese Americans. Professor XYZ actually is one of our key leaders. We just had a retreat uh, last weekend. So as the professor presents the data, the Chinese all the way on the bottom regarding vote and involvement. So are your kids learn to involve because if you don't sit on the table, you'll be on the menu. Eventually, we have to think about you are not get judged by the color. You really get judged by the content of your character. So we have been working very hard to really get more Chinese American involved to really help us solve different issues, address different issues, and promote different leaders especially with the tension between U.S. and China, we face tremendous challenges. So not only we have to work together, we have to join forces with not only other Asian groups, but also you know, Jewish and also white you know, African Americans. So together, we are really the United States of America. We, we share the same rights. That's what we try to do. Awesome, thank you. How I approach my Asian American identity, right, because this is subjective, correct? I come from a generational approach. I shared in my introductory remarks that I'm second generation in Bay Area born and raised. That implies a number of, of influences, my music taste, my political ideology, how my cadence, my outlook on recycling and composting, they are reflections of growing up in the Bay Area in Northern California and in a state as richly diverse as the Golden State. Lead Filipino is a San Jose-based community organization. We are four years old and we have an office in San Jose. Our strength is working with young adults, so engaging the how do we say it, emerging leaders to touch our electoral process, to understand the roots of the census, to connect their ethnic understanding and to bridge it with their activism and their leadership in a political and civic context. The students that I work with are primarily first and second generation and what attracts them to lead Filipinos work and under the broader rubric of Asian American advancement is the culture, 
preserving the cultural elements. And what are those? Song, dance, amazing food, am I right? So language is very important to the students that I work with. And we're talking kids at San Jose State, Stanford University, Santa Clara University, UC Davis, Sonoma State, Sac State, De Anza, you get it. Language is major to at least the generational, um, the influences with Filipino and Filipina students that we are trying to activate to touch these processes. Many of us, and I know that this is um, not unfamiliar, but we were forced in our waves of immigration to abandon our native tongues, at least in the Filipino and Filipino American community, such that we don't speak our native languages anymore, which by the way, there are 80 plus dialects in the Philippines that are spoken, not just Tagalog. And so language and dance and our history is really what we coalesce around in terms of what we celebrate. And I'll talk more about my opinions on how are we creating a shared Asian American experience in this context. Thank you, wow, that's wonderful. So I wanted to touch base a little bit about this immigrant uh, experience. So, you know, obviously, when we talk about Asian Americans, uh, the first thing is that uh, we have all migrated to this country from faraway lands. And there are certain mindsets, you know, there are certain way we are all viewed in collectivity. So although, you know, the countries of our origins are very different, they have you know, they have had tremendous growth and they have met with tremendous success um, um, in the modern time as well in very ancient civilizations. But when we move to United States, one thing that kind of unites all together is our collective Asian identity. And um, I wanted to mention that as this collective Asian community in the United States, uh, obviously we have had the challenges of assimilation and the perseverance and dedication to meet those challenges, but we have also contributed immensely. You know, like 20% of uh, undergrads in all the Ivy League school, Pan America, are um, Asian Americans. 69% uh, of the Silicon Valley consist of immigrants in really high technical occupations. As a recent report from Zillow, it says like the home ownership has um, um, advanced to 58% uh, in 2016 from the Asian American community uh, as compared to 27% from the white American community. So we are also co contributing immensely to the growth and economy, uh, to the culture, uh, you know, the fabric of United States. So I think that is an important caution to understand that we have arrived and we have assimilated and we are contributing. The next step, of course, is to how we engage. So as Professor XYZ said very correctly, I mean, it was really inspiring to see the data that, you know, where we are falling short. So obviously, you know, we are hugely underrepresented from the highest offices in the United States. And that is one area where we can collectively, you know, come together, uh, see even in the Silicon Valley, although, you know, we have had met with so much success, uh, as they say, the bamboo ceiling still exists, you know. So in my opinion, I would just like to quickly share one little, um, you know, I would call it a success. So last year, uh, some of us got together in, in our you know, civic discourses to see that the city of Sunnyvale did not have any Asian American elected official. So we got together, we talked to our respective communities, you know, the collective Asian communities and, you know, created the awareness and uh, last election, um, Mason Fong, uh, the first Asian American who got elected in the city council of Sunnyvale. So 
that itself, you know, proves that it is possible. You know, it just we have to step out of our comfort zone and get involved in this immersive process, like Professor Sid and all my colleagues, the fellow panelists are mentioning, that we do have, um, um, you know, um, a lot of shared vision in terms of education, family, in terms of uh, career prospects. And all these value systems uh, coming from our, you know, Eastern philosophy, civilizations, uh, if we can bring together and share with each other, I think, um, you know, we will definitely meet with much higher level of success. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, okay, so we're going to talk about how we're going to un try to unite all Asian Americans because we, uh, rising tide lifts all boats, right? Uh, unfortunately, there are some Asian American that are not as successful as the Asian American represented here. If you look at the Hmongs, the Cambodians, and so on, we have the highest, you know, uh, uh, the highest discrepancy between the top 10% and the lower 10%, more so than the whites, more so than any other racial group, because we have some Asian American that are very successful and others that are not so successful. So as an example, uh, I want to give, well, I tell everybody I have three jobs, but actually my all three jobs are all, all, all the same, okay? Because in 8020 pack we have a very diverse um, panel, I mean, board of director, and we support both Andrew Yang and Tulsi Gabbard, who is a, a Hawaiian uh, uh, person of Hindu, uh, uh, ancestry. Okay, at Apapa, when the Kansas City happened, uh, when two Indian, they're not even Indian Americans, so they are not even green card holders, they were work working there, they got shot because they thought they were Muslim, okay? So we supported that, and we found out that Kansas, City, Kansas does not have a hate crime law, so we supported that. Uh, and then it just so happened uh, that weekend, CNN was showing a uh, religious program about Hindi, but they did not show the mainstream Hindu. They show a very minor sect that uh, believe in eating ca cannibalism. So we wrote letters to stop that because it give a wrong impression, okay? At CLUSA, I tried to I will try to convene a very diverse panel so that we can, you know, do that. So, so I want each of you to talk about how we can come together as Asian American and support each other because we only represent 5.8% of the population and each of us represents less than 2%, okay? Maybe the Chinese are a little bit bigger, but we have to work together, otherwise, we will be on the menu. So let's go around the table again. You want to go? I want you to go first this time. <laughs> sure. So um, India Currents, as is partnering this program, you know, in our media house, so India Currents has been there in the Silicon Valley for 30 years, more than 30 years now. And we have featured extensively of such stories, like Young mentioned. Um, on the immigrants here, not just Indian immigrants, but a collective stories of all immigrants uh, who share, um, you know, similar experiences. So media, I think, is powerful. I would urge all of you to engage and contribute and have your voices heard. And um, even, as, and these platforms like this, so uh, Ding Ding TV, I think, is doing a commendable uh, job in bringing us together. And this is how, you know, we can know, learn more about each other, our goals and aspirations. And the civic leadership program uh, itself is very important, as Professor XYZ mentioned as well, and we are all talking about it. 
election is um, because I know it from Indian community. I know a lot of Indian Americans. They just don't want anything to do with politics. They're like, oh, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't want to, you know, go talk anywhere. But we need to step out of that um, inhibition, you know, because if we don't show ourselves up, then they don't count us. And there are issues specific to the community uh, which needed to be heard. So getting engaged in the election process is, of course, uh, extremely important. And how we do this, I think we would want to start with our respective city. You know, we do have city council members, so you wouldn't want to know who is the city council member representing your particular district and make an effort to meet that person over breakfast, over lunch, on any of the community events. And uh, trust me, I mean, five years back, I knew nothing about American politics. And that's how I started. That's how I got engaged with India Currents. One of our Indian American candidates, Ash Kalra, uh, who represents uh, California State Assembly member, the first Indian American, Hindu American uh, State Assembly member ever in the history of California. His district had you know, large number of Vietnamese Americans, large number of Filipino Americans, and um, it was through his campaign that we got so uh, engaged with the larger, greater Asian community. It's in San Jose. Uh, we did not know about each other before, but it was this campaign uh, changed everything, and we made really good friends in India Currents. We have actually published uh, book reviews of Vietnamese author, Vietnamese American. Um, they live in San Jose, and we have uh, written stories about the Filipino experience, and we have talked about the food and culture, and I think it's incredible. I mean, there's so much to learn still, but I think we are on the right track. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you for sharing. And, um, I love Assemblyman Ash Kalra. I just saw him on Tuesday in Sacramento. He's amazing. So this is, in my opinion, more art than science any day. But we're looking down the face of 2020, and it is a huge year on many dimensions. We know that we're going to have several and many a conversations about the implications of the census. We know the Voters' Choice Act is being implemented. And we know that we have a general election. The stakes are high. And so why do I say more art than science? Lead Filipino's approach and my personal philosophy is that I want to build community with people that I trust. And how do you do that in a way that is symbolic, genuine, and wholly supportive of other communities? So Joel mentioned the Hmong community, the Cambodians. My friend mentioned the Vietnamese American community. And so what we have adopted as Lead Filipino is really being pronounced and present in coalitions. And as an example, we are an active member of the Asian Pacific Islander uh, Justice Coalition that is based here in the South Bay and comprised of other health and human service grassroots organizations that serve all the many API groups here in this locality. So through actively participating in those meetings on a monthly basis, I've made friends with Korean, the organizers with the Korean American Community Services, the Cambodian Women's Network, Vietnamese American Roundtable. And you know what? Every month when they bring their calendar of events, whether or not it's the commemoration for Black April for the Vietnamese American community, or the Council on um, um, Arab, um, so the organization is CARE, it's the Council on Islamic Relations, yes. Our friends there invited us to celebrations. We show up. We show up, we go on a Sunday, we bring our organizers, and it's a symbol of solidarity, and it's a symbol of respect. And once we as an organization, a collective group come together and we're staring down the nose of a 2020 census and we're turning inward and we're asking ourselves, how are we going to, to be a force multiplier? How are we going to activate outreach strategies at the campuses with faith-based organizations, with small businesses, with private sector large employers? 
How are we going to work in concert but start here? I'm like an honorary Latina. I go to all of the Latina Coalition of Silicon Valley's events. They have mixers. They have similar fora for Latinas that have successfully been appointed to commissions, are serving on task forces, and are many of the first in our region and in the country to serve in, a, in an elected capacity. So we show up because our presence, even if we're not vocal at that event, showing that we are there and we see them and we hear them and we celebrate in their successes and their contributions, I think is how you base build. And so my main point in this long diatribe is base building on trust because that's how you're going to uplift and that's how you're going to move and that's how you're going to address some of these big, thorny, hairy issues that are coming in 2020. Thank you. May I ask uh, how many here who are not a Chinese American? So it's a very small percentage. So even though we show the data, in Asian Americans, a very small percentage, but we don't really feel that. Because when we are in Silicon Valley, we see we are the majority. When we go to parents' meeting, when the students get together, when you go to debate tournaments, in Chinese Indians, mostly. Right? But throughout the country, it's a different situation. I think that gives us in Silicon Valley to take the leadership to do things right, then we duplicate the success in two other regions and other states. Um, I'll give you an example. A few years ago, we had the first UC United Chinese American Convention in DC. So there was a panel. You have FBI, you have CIA guys talking about the you know, Chinese scientists, and engineers, the different issues. So I got on the panel, just that you should not even go there because it's too sensitive. But, you know, I got up there talking about our Silicon Valley, the FBI, the CIA, you guys said, wow, we have no idea. So many Asian employees here in Silicon Valley. What a significant impact our Asian making to the society, especially to the Silicon Valley. I mean, our, we pay such high tax dollars. So we have every right, right, to enjoy all the Major, majority of Americans enjoy it. The thing is, we are not just to work with Chinese Americans, we are not just to work with Asian Americans. We have to influence the majority. Start by doing things each and every individual of us. I know a lot of Asians, especially Chinese, say, okay, we study hard, we go to best school, we get the best job, we make a great living. We enjoy this free land. But then when things happen, so wow, we don't even have a say. So I know a lot of Asians' parents just say, okay, you can only study STEM. <laughs> That's the only way you get good jobs. So I still remember talking about the Indians. They said that every Indian will have a STEM degree and then get an MBA degree. Then you become corporate executive, then you make a great living. All Asians position that way. But I think it's wonderful for Andrew Yang to come up, raising, right? He studied economics, he studied the law, and even though he did the entrepreneur work, even though he's wonderful at the math, so he's going for the political positions. So that's how we come to the table. And we're talking about the start with in every individual of us. A lot of us are very busy with our work with kids. So when we engage some people to say, oh, what does UCA do? What does UCA can do for me? I want to end with a very famous quote from John F. Kennedy. Ask not what the country can do for you. Ask what you can do for the country. So ask each of us, what it can do for the community. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have, uh, according to the schedule, we have about 40 minutes. Uh, we are running out of time. Uh, can we entertain a question from, or two from the audience? If not, we'll just, okay. Uh, I want everybody on, on stage, and all you to pledge to work together as Asian American 
okay, so that uh, we uh, identify as a single group. So not only the rising Thai race or vote, we are on the same boat. Okay, so remember that. Okay, thank you. <laughs>